Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm John Reisinger. It doesn't seem possible, but Final Fantasy XV, the game we first saw back at E3 a whole decade ago, is releasing tomorrow, or kind of tonight. Yeah. Considering all the years of development, the hopes of fans, and maybe even the franchise as a whole are pinned to one giant question. Is it good? <gasps> Well, reviews are out at long last ahead of the game's launch, and by Bahamut, it seems like Square Enix may have salvaged all the hours of effort and cobbled together a game that, well, by most accounts, is actually pretty good. So the answer is kind of yes. Yay! Give a collective sigh of relief, Final right. Fantasy Faithful, because Final Fantasy XV is rocking an 86 on Metacritic at the time of writing. As for how that compares to other Final Fantasy games, well, we've got to go ways back <laughs> to even get a sense of that, thanks to Final Fantasy XV's rather lengthy time in the cooker. Ignoring the online entries, uh, Final Fantasy XIII, XIII II, and Lightning Returns all scored 83, 79, and 66 back when they came out. Uh, before that, Final Fantasy 12 and 10 both ended up at 92, so it seems like possibly a move back to form for the series, which should be a welcome sign for fans who are perhaps disappointed by Final Fantasy 13 and its so-so sequels. Right here. You're disappointed, I'm so sorry. I played them, but I was disappointed the whole time. That sucks. As for the reviews, the bigger outlets are all very positive on Final Fantasy XV. Twinfinite, Time, and Games Radar awarded it 4.5 out of 5 stars, That's while good. Daily Dot and US Gamer gave it 4 out of 5. For those who fancy numbers over stars, Venture Beat gave it a 90 out of 100, while Destructoid and Polygon gave it a 9 out of 10. Game Informer gave it an 8.5 out of 10, IGN an 8.2 out of 10, and GameSpot an 8 out of 10. That's really good. It's pretty uh, decent. Yeah. Art. The thing about that is that it's consistent. Yeah. So a lot of times you'll get one crazy outlier, but those are all pretty much in the same range. That's good. After after looking at the reviews, the big takeaway for Final Fantasy's uh, 15 strengths are its fleshed out open world with tons of stuff to do, awesome complementary gameplay systems, and most of all, the bond between its four main characters. It's fantastic. <laughs> On the flip side, it sounds like the game didn't quite leave that long development time unscathed because it's filled with strange design decisions, a struggling camera, and really poor pacing in its final stretch. Some reviewers found these flaws more off-putting than others, and some felt like the sum was greater than its parts. But. Let's start with the good, uh, which for many reviewers was more than good. Final Fantasy XV's four main characters and the focus it places on the relationships. Uh, much has been made about uh, the game's central road trip element, <laughs> but it sounds like it majorly paid off here with some saying Noctis and company rank among, rank among the best Final Fantasy characters ever created. And that's saying something. Yeah. Uh, that's certainly how Polygon felt. They said in their review, by the end, Noctis's gang are three of the most well-drawn, fully developed characters in Final Fantasy history because the game lets you just spend time with them as much in the boring moments as the epic ones. A lot of that has to do with the game's open world design, which throws you right into the action from the get-go, giving you every opportunity to explore and tackle missions at whatever pace you choose. On your way there, you'll learn all about these four anime boy band lookalikes who talk during dungeon runs, joke with each other on the road, and tackle the game's massive bosses together. Now, it certainly helps that these characters do their bonding across one of Final Fantasy XV strongest and most celebrated features, the world of Eos, which is filled with opportunities to explore either on the road with the Regalia or off-road by Chocobo. Chocobo! Of course! Games Radar wrote, The world of Eos feels real and lived in, resembling the highways and byways of the American heartland as much as it is wholly alien, and its heroes are our window into this beguiling place. Time Magazine said Eos was a magical place to explore as well because its stunning vistas were so unique, grounded in reality, but filled with the fantastical. It's as if someone grafted the grit of CD Projekt Red's The Witcher 3 and post-war 1950s shtick of the Fallout series into Monolith Soft's geologically alien Xenoblade games. Whoa, okay, that's, I mean, like, just putting, if you put those couple things together already, yeah. you're gonna get a lot of people pretty happy. Yeah. Now, beyond exploring it for the main quest, there is plenty to do on the side. More surprising than the quality of side quests, close to 100 in total, by the way, <laughs> is that each of them is fleshed out, adding more content and lore to the story and world if you wish to discover it, but you're not missing out if you don't. Yeah, that's good. The Daily Dot said of the side quest, you'll be driving over myriad stretches of highways multiple times as you check off objectives and temporarily boosting stats at the many diners. When you've passed the 100 hour mark, you'll have felt like every dozen yards has had some purpose, even if it's to take on an unexpected foe. Now, in between all this traveling, the game's many complementary mechanics work together beautifully, according to reviewers. At night, when things get more dangerous, it's more advisable to stop and camp. Leveling happens 
happens when you rest. So this is when your experience gets added up for the day. It's also when you cook to make food with buffs for the next day's battles, and when you browse the pictures promptos taken of your daily exploits, uh, all while your party bonds by the fire. Pick, take up a guitar and play some songs. Tell some, some ghost stories. Yeah. However, it should be noted that not everybody found the exploration to be all that grand. One thing mentioned in some reviews was that regalia isn't fully controllable while on the road. Some reviewers liked that this let you focus on the landscape and listen to your character's conversations, but others found it boring. Yeah. Game Informer complained, although most of the game takes place on roads, the car cannot be controlled in a traditional way. The top speed is roughly 50 miles per hour, or 60 with an upgrade, and its basic movements, like turning or changing lanes, are predetermined. It feels like it's on rails. You're more of an observer than a driver. It's definitely an interesting and perhaps uh, contentious design decision, and unfortunately, it sounds like Final Fantasy is loaded with those, particularly when it comes to the game's combat and story. For every reviewer that liked the game's fast-paced combat, there was a reviewer like IGN who called the combat system thin, making for a passive experience. They also disliked the lack of emphasis placed on the magic system, writing, even worse, spell variety is downright anemic with only the most basic black magic stalwarts of fire, ice, and thunder, and their second and third rank equivalents making the cut, which is kind of a bummer as someone who comes from, frankly, a lot of the, the turn-based mm -hmm. games. Going to the sort of real-time combat was always a risk for the franchise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's paid off, sometimes it hasn't. You know, 13 didn't do all that amazing. Uh, and the concern is that this one is kind of followed suit in that particular way. Yeah, and while the game's story succeeds when it comes to the main characters, many found it to fall apart in the game's latter half, which becomes completely linear. That's not unexpected as you near the end of a major campaign, but it sounds like it's pretty big negative in Final Fantasy XV's case. Games Beat wrote of the game's last 15 to 20 hours, a lot of these endgame missions feel flat. Up to that point, the adventure has something of a breezy, casual pace with story advancement coming infrequently. These last chapters almost feel like they're trying to play catch-up, suddenly racing toward an ending while not really giving you a lot to do. It's like they forgot they had to finish the game. <laughs> Hurry, like, finish oh, it! Oh yeah! Yeah, it's gotta be an end of this game. Others wrote that the last third of the game feels like a separate, rushed game that didn't get fully developed before releasing, including one section in particular that features one of the most frustrating Final Fantasy sequences in recent memory. However, it should be said that despite Despite those uneven final chapters, critics generally found the game to end on a wonderful note with one of the stronger endings in the series. Plus, once the game is finished, some of the best side missions open up, giving you even more gameplay once the credits have rolled. Uh, GameSpot wrote Final Fantasy XV's endgame content is some of the best in the entire game. Unreasonably large monsters, yes. legendary weapons, yes. and mysterious high-level dungeons of lie course. in wait if you choose to continue playing. In all, the consensus is that despite its flaws, some of them are fairly glaring, mm -hmm. Final Final Fantasy XV brings the series back to its heyday by putting the focus on a cast of really great characters and some really innovative game mechanics. Mm -hmm. The world of EOS is a blast to explore, and the game lets you do so at your own pace. However, things do take a turn in the final act, and how much that bothers you will depend on your own preferences. So, what do you guys think of all the early praise for Final Fantasy XV? Who plans on picking it up? I'm very curious. Let us know in the comments. Me! For more news on gaming's biggest releases, remember to like this video and subscribe to The Know. And if you're curious about what the game is all about in the first place, we did a No Before You Go and run over a bunch of the features you can expect to see. We have a bunch of stuff on sale in our store. Oh yeah, you should go like do that. Like a ton of stuff. Yeah, like, go, so we have like a uh, hundred new things in the store. Roosterteeth.com slash store. Onesies. Yeah, onesies are great actually. The onesies are great. Yeah.